Word is already spread. I gave bonuses to everybody that had a finish tonight. Total of nine bonuses. Um, congratulations to everybody. Gate was $4.5 million, the biggest gate ever in O2 history. Um, and this was the biggest fight night of all time. Dana, when you, uh, you talked a lot this week about you know, how you weren't so concerned about the walkouts and things like that, but you were really excited about the talent on this card from this portion of the world. Right. Um, how do you, I mean, they couldn't have delivered any better, right? It seriously could not go any better. It was fucking unbelievable. Um, I just, I, I don't even know what to say. Uh, everybody, can, think about this. Everybody's been locked up for two and a half years. Some, some of these kids have been fighting in the apex or with no fans and, and stuff like that and then to come in tonight in their home country and deliver the way that they did was a big night. And they're all fighting real people. They, these weren't like hometown set-up fights. They, they fought tough guys. Dana, but, uh, with the main event as well, with Tom Aspinall representing... Oh, I still got this guy, yeah. Oh, no that's right. That's right. Um, I mean, to that point, uh, with Tom Aspinall in the main event... Um, I feel like he's kind of part of this new wave of heavyweights, and I feel like Mick Maynard's done a really good job kind of rebuilding this division that was once considered a lot older. Um, yeah. How do you just feel about how this has come along and having guys like Tom Aspinall, like Ty Tuivasa, who are all in the top five now, are very close? He fought a real guy who's seen it all and done it all, durable, big, rangy, kicks hard, and went in there and made it look easy, you know? Uh, so now, I mean, this kid will break into the top five this week. And uh, now he's in the conversation to fight literally the best heavyweights in the world. Yeah, and then the co-man, Arnold Allen, 9-0 and in the UFC now. Uh, there hasn't been many guys that have put a run like that together and not, either not got, like, a title shot or an interim title fight or something like that. Um, he said he wants to fight Calvin Cater. Do you feel like he's kind of in that upper echelon, should be headlining cards, things like that? He just, who he just beat tonight and the way that he beat him, um, you know, he, he got in there and went right to war with Hooker, uh, stood right in the pocket, didn't back down, and, and literally destroyed him, man. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, he's ready for anything now. T tonight we found out where that kid's really at, and he's ready. And as far as Patty, I mean, where, where did that performance show? I know you were getting asked a ton about him this week and to, you know, deliver like he did. Um, what's your perspective on him now? Yeah, this week I was getting tired of hearing, oh, wait till you see his walkout, wait till you see this and that. I'm like, I want to see him fight. <laughs> he needs to win. This, you know, uh, but he did, and he did spectacularly. Um, and when he was in trouble, he came back and, and, and turned a fight around and won. I'll give you an example. So, on my Instagram, I posted the, uh, the uh, you know, the face-offs yesterday from the, the heavyweight fight. Did 120,000 views on my Instagram. Patty's face-off did 1.3 million. So all the talk going on this fight about his walk-in and all the shit. Listen, it's real. This kid's got a ton of, a ton of hype behind him. And tonight he showed everybody that he's the real deal. And I know you don't match me on the night of the fight, but Ilya Tapuria got a big finish. Patty, they had their beef this week. Do you feel like that's kind of just a layup for you guys? No, I have no idea. I, I don't know what's next. I'm not even uh, – tonight was such a good night. Like, my brain is absolute mush tonight. I'm just uh, – and my voice and some other things too. But uh, I, we'll, we'll get back home and, and, and figure out what's next. And tonight re-energized me and reminded me of what it's like to do fights over in the UK, man. We're coming back this year. I don't give a shit what the schedule is. We're gonna, we're gonna be moving some shit around when we get home. So, uh, you know, the way I look at it, you do, you do half the kids that won. You come back here and do a card with, with them and somebody else, and you take the other half of the kids to Abu Dhabi in October. So, just off the top of my head, that's what I'm thinking right now. And just last thing from me, uh, not to end it kind of on a downer note, but there's a lot of people uh, who saw the broadcast as cage side, so I didn't see, but they're wondering why uh, Nikita Krylov didn't get the Ukrainian flag shown on him and his. He asked fight. not to. He asked to be, yeah. Uh, just any particular reason? I don't know. It's his personal shit. I don't care. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Dana, from a, a businessman's perspective and the fight fan that we all know that you are, this night was so successful to be you. And when you look at it, break the card down, there's at least three or four we got guys on that card that could main event a stadium show, an arena show over here. 
just how great is it to see how, how well it's gone? Arnold, Allen, Molly, Paddy, Tom. It's been, it's been incredible, hasn't it? Yeah. Ask me that question again. <laughs> just in terms of the excitement for the future of MMA in the UK, you've got four guys where you said you definitely want to come back. That gives you the option to say, Manchester, we could have Tom Aspinall main event. Liverpool, we could have Paddy, Molly co-main event. You've got options in this country, and it's yeah. great to see. I mean, coming in this week, I was saying this is the, the greatest batch of talent um, we've ever seen in, in, in the history of the UK. And uh, tonight we were going to find out, you know, how they were all going to do. And, I mean, they, they killed it. It couldn't be any better. So, yeah, I mean... That we have so many options now and so many things we could do. That's why I'm, uh, we're going to go home and I'm going to figure out immediately how to come back here. I don't know where we'll go or what we'll do yet, but like you just said, I, I have nothing but options. I mean, Tom had a lot of things to go through heading into this fight. There was the, the going from sort of the, the early main event card to the main event with the, with the change and everything, and then dealing with uh, his opponent maybe not even coming over. How impressed were you with how well he's rose to the occasion? He's not fought in front of a crowd in two, three years. And was he on your radar prior to this as well? What, your, what were your pre-fight thoughts ahead of him before this even happened? Tom? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I was telling him, he, he fought one of the best in the world tonight, and he made it look easy. He's going to break into the top five next week. And uh, when the rankings come out, and, and, and he's in the discussion now to fight anybody. It, it's, it's, uh, he, he couldn't have uh, made a bigger or better statement than he did tonight. And, and just aside from tonight, this is just the last one from me. I spoke to Connor a, a few weeks ago, and he seemed so passionate and re-energized re about the fight game. Obviously, there's been the, the talk about Paddy and stuff, whether, whether that's going to go down down the line, or, or who knows. But in terms of Connor's return, there's so many guys on the table. Nate Diaz trilogy, Maz Vidal, even mentioned Usman the other day. Uh, in your ideal scenario, who would you like to see Connor face, just off the top of your head? Connor's not cleared by his doctor yet. When he's cleared, I mean, some of these fights are going to happen this summer. We'll see what the landscape looks like, and we'll see where his head's at at that time, and we'll pick a fight for him. Take it just down to your right here. Yeah. Um, oh. with, with, the, with the nine, but the bonuses you gave out tonight, just run your name. Uh, with, uh, with all the bonuses you gave out tonight, was that just a case that you were very excited about how good the event was and you got backstage? And all the bonuses, yeah. yeah. Well, they had already done the bonuses and uh, they were walking me through it and I was like, fuck it. I'm in such a good mood, man. Give everybody <laughs> a bonus. And they all deserve it. I mean, tonight... Couldn't have been a better night. You couldn't write a better script. It couldn't go any better than it did. The fights were awesome. Everybody fought their ass off. Kids who won, kids who lost. Yeah. Is this, would you say this is comparable to UFC Dublin back in the day when they had all the Irish guys win? Is this this version for England? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. All I know is tonight was fucking amazing. I sat there tonight and had one of the best times I've had in a long time. And yeah. You had a guest with you at ringside, Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua. I'm curious, I th I've heard Eddie say that he likes MMA, but he doesn't really understand it. Do you know what he thought of tonight's event and what he thought of the fights? They were all blown away. They were like, the, the, this is our first MMA fight. This is incredible. And yeah, they had a blast. I mean, if you, if you don't understand MMA or you don't whatever, if you sat in that crowd tonight and didn't have the best time of your life, you're, you're fucking dead probably. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say. It's just tonight... I do this every weekend, right? And I had the, I had the best time ever tonight. So people were hitting me up from the States saying, on TV, this thing felt like a huge pay-per-view. Was he just And it's the English crowd. The, the crowd, when you're, when you're home and you can hear the chanting and, and all the stuff that's going on and the way that these, these people react to fights out here. And then you, the fights are off the charts. It just it doesn't get any, if you're a fight fan, it doesn't get any better. Yeah, we are very good. Um, last, was Eddie here just as a guest, or is there some business going on? Yeah, yeah, no, just a guest, yeah. We're friends, and I like Eddie a lot, and, and, and he finally got the opportunity. Dana, just Dana, right over right. here at the back. Uh, uh, were all the bonuses the usual 50,000, even the extra ones, or did, was it adjusted? 
was what? Were all the bonuses the usual 50000 No, all no, right? they're all 50000 yeah. Yeah. And then Paul Craig was obviously called out Anthony Smith for a fight in Glasgow in, in June. Is that just wishful, wishful thinking, or is that... <laughs> Very. <laughs> and finally, uh, what did you make of Molly McCann's performance? I know you gave her a bonus, but uh, she ran out of the crowd, grabbed the UFC title, was running around <laughs> with it outside. What did you make of her performance? I think she's a maniac, and I love everything about her. Um, you know, uh, she's fun. She's fun to watch. She's fun to listen to. Um, and, and, and her fights are fun. Both those girls fought their ass off tonight. And, and uh, yeah. Dana, Dana to your right. Over here at the back. Yeah. Um, I think you touched on it a little bit, but there's been some rumors that there's a few um, events booked in the UK for the remainder of the, of the year, and you're just waiting on a few things to confirm that's, them. That's not true. Not true? No, it's not true. That's fine. And to be to, to be honest with you, you know, um, I'm not going to be that honest with you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we absolutely positively did not book any other places <laughs> here, and we're not looking at, at any other places till tonight. To, after tonight, we'll get back to the office, and we will figure something else out to come back once more this year. Um, Mike touched on it a little bit, but he said that Arnold Allen is now on a nine-fight win streak. If he gets one more, that's obviously ten, and surely he can't be denied a title, title shot after that, right? Arnold Allen, he's on a nine-fight win streak. If he gets a ten-fight win, would you consider him for a title match? I don't know, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, tonight was a big win for him, though. I mean, t to do what he did the way that he did it, big deal. And just finally, true or false? British MMA fans are the best fans in the world. Are British fans the best in the world? Yes. This is all I can say is if you've never been to a fight here, I don't give a shit where in the world you live, you need to come here and see a fight one of these days. It's just, it's a different, it's a different animal, man. It's a different experience. I wasn't even pissed when I got hit with like three beers at the end of the fight. Like, <laughs> Who gives a shit? This was awesome. Thanks, Dana. Dana yeah. Dana. Where did you go? Um, you know, with your reaction to tonight, would you ever consider putting on another pay-per-view over here like you did with UFC 204? Would you ever do a pay-per-view in Manchester? In Manchester. It's a great question. So the only thing that would have made tonight even better, if you can even make tonight any better, would have been if, if, if Usman and Leon were the, were the main event and, you know, Aspinall was the co-main event. Um, so the answer is yes, and I, and I wanted to do that. I wanted this card tonight to be a title fight, and I was going to move things around, try to make it happen, but Usman's hand just wasn't ready. If uh, Leon was successful in uh, defeating Usman, would you be interested in him maybe having his first title defense as a pay-per-view here in the UK? I'm going to have a pay-per-view here. I will do it. Mm -hmm. I, I'll bring a title fight. Yeah. Uh, and in terms of Paddy, do you think he's ready for a main event now? Is Paddy ready for what? A main event. A what? Main event. <laughs> that was quick. I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, his numbers say yes. His numbers say yes. He could headline a fight night. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Dana, Dana here. Um, have you checked uh, your Instagram? Oh, to your left here. Oh. Have you checked your Instagram to see if you got the message from Mohammed Makayev? He said that he messaged you four years ago on Instagram that he'd be in the UFC. No, no, but he told me that. I, lo I love sports. You know, Tom did too. Tom said when he was 12 years old, he met me at, at an arena, and, and he walked up to me, and he said, I'm going to fight for you someday when he was 12. I love that shit. And in terms of Mo, what did you make of his performance? I mean, it was in fact. Yeah. Everybody was tonight, man. It's just, it's, yeah, tonight was incredible. Dana, it's over here, man. Um, first of all, thank you so much for coming back to the UK. It's been a few years, and as you said, it couldn't have got any better. And I think in here, we could all agree with that completely. What a card it was. All fin amazing finishes and made the British look great, which is what we always like. Um, in regards to Paddy Pimlet, two fights in the UFC, and look how popular he is already. Are we seeing like another... McGregor sort of coming through popularity-wise now, because literally two fights in the UFC, and he's getting, as you said, 1.3 million views. On mine. I mean, uh, imagine what he did on UFCs, and uh, imagine what he did this week for Barstool. Um, yeah, I, I, it's just, it's, it's one of those things when you have a guy 
that that's as hot as this. He's, he's like um, O'Malley, too. I mean, O'Malley pulls big numbers. We've had a couple guys off the Contender Series that have pulled some big numbers. Um, I, I mean, that, that's, that's the best way I, I could uh, think to explain it. If you look at some of the guys that have come off the Contender Series and we watch the numbers, we see what they do, you'll see these guys either move right to pay-per-view or we headline them or put them in strong positions on fight nights. So um, Patty is definitely one of those guys that, that, that could be one. Yeah, I agree completely. And one more for me is um, I know you gave everyone a fight the night. We were talking back here thinking Dana's got his hands full who's going to get the fight bonuses tonight because there's so many to choose from. Um, if you had to pick one, just one fight Well, tonight. let me ask you, the media. Let me throw this back at you. <laughs> if I had to pick three, I mean, when you go back, you think if you have to pick three, you'd have to go with Aspinall. Arnold Allen. Right? Yeah. You have to go with, with Arnold, right? And Molly. And Molly? That would be my top three. Yeah. 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 As I said, there's too many to choose from, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, Craig came back. Craig was getting his ass whooped. Was about to get finished, right? He was on his back taking big shots, and he pulls that off. And then... Um, How many times has Paul Craig done that? Toporia was getting his ass whooped, too. Toporia was losing that fight. And he comes back with that big shot. And, and again, vicious, vicious knockout. Yeah, not an easy night. Dana. Dana. Thank, thank you. Okay. okay. Wait, if you had to pick one. If I had to pick one. Do you go with do you go with Aspinall or do you go with Arnold? I'd go with Arnold because of literally this he caught one on the chin so hard from Hooker and he took that and Yeah, he buckled too. He buckled too and hung in the pocket, kept fighting, dropped the one knee and then stayed in there and kept fighting. We had Gunnar Nelson here, we're trying to interview, and we were were all looking at the telly, so Gunnar come and joined us watching the fight because like, what's going on? Why are you all looking this way, not that way, you know? So yeah, mate, if I had to pick one, it would be the Arnold Allen fight. Yeah. You had to pick one. Molly? I had to pick one. I know. It was greatest female knockout you'll ever fucking see. Women do not knock women out like that. Huh? Yeah. That was a head kick, too. Kicking's a lot harder than hitting somebody with your arms, even if it's an elbow, man. Third round, she was exhausted. Ooh, look at him trying to sell the, the Molly one here. Wait, so who'd you pick? Molly? Holy shit. Molly. Oh, no. Right. What, what would you, Dana, what would you say? If we chuck it back to you, Dana, what would you say? I agree with you on Arnold. Yeah, I'd have to go with Arnold. He, he, just, not, he just beat the shit out of fucking Hooker. I mean, that's who just moved down a weight class to fight in the, in the lower weight class. Um, and he did it in, within seconds of the first round. And being cross as well at the same time. And was hurt. It's true. And stayed right in there and kept it a dog fight. Hey, Dana. To your right. Yeah. You brought up his name, Sugar Sean O'Malley. How would you compare the stardom of Patty Pimlet, second fight in with this arena, with the performance, to Sugar Sean O'Malley's stardom right now in the UFC? I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's close. They're 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 both huge. I mean, the difference between a guy like um, like Patty is. These, these guys that are from England or Brazil or China or whatever it is, they got a whole country behind them, you know what I mean? America doesn't really work like that. So when you can become a star like O'Malley is in America, it's, it's a big deal. We knew this was a risky situation for Dan Hooker coming into this matchup, but after the loss here, do you like this weight division for him moving forward or do you want to see him going back up at 155? That's up to him. He came in and performed tonight. I mean, he made weight. He came in and went to war with a guy who's undefeated in this weight class, and uh, he can do whatever he wants to do. If you had to pick your favorite memory from tonight, aside from Molly's knockout, because that was spectacular, what would it be? You took the fucking thing that I was going to say. I I know. That's rude. That is just rude. (laughs) I had to pick something from tonight other than Molly. Huh? Uh, it would probably probably be Toporia. The Toporia fight kicked off the main card, and, and uh, Toporia has a, a hell of a chin. He took some big shots and knees, and what else did he get hit with? Something else, like maybe an elbow or something? Huh? 
Yeah. And then viciously knocks him out, which set up the molly. Yeah, Dana over here. Earlier this week when we spoke and you were saying about this was a huge night for this card to prove that perhaps there could be a stadium show in the UK down the road. So when you're talking about bringing a pay-per-view over here, is that what's in your mind, that that would be the stadium show perhaps? Well, no. I, I, you know, coming in this week, I thought that this was the greatest class of fighters going into a fight week ever in the history of the UK. And uh, were, were we right or were we wrong? And we were right tonight. We came in and they proved that they are. Um, yeah, what did you ask me? <laughs> did I answer your question? Yeah. Not really. I mean, uh, you were saying that tonight was such a big night for them to prove that, you know, if they can keep winning and keep that buzz, that there could be a stadium show. Surely they Oh, a stadium show. They, they couldn't have done much more, I guess, to what you were saying earlier this week. Eddie Hearn looked at me tonight and said, you should do a stadium show after tonight, you know. Um, I'm going to tell you a couple reasons I don't like stadium shows. First of all, most of them are outdoors. And this is not a country you do shit outdoors, okay? <laughs> Let's just be honest. Um, and you don't get the type of same experience that you get in a stadium that you do. But the difference is here, you guys are used to it. You guys are used to watching things in the stadiums. I just think that things, you get a better event and a better atmosphere and a better experience in an arena. Yeah. And what, we, you were talking about Paul Craig as well and what he did tonight. I'm beating his six now, five wins. Like, where do you see him in the lightweight division? Uh, sorry, lightweight, like heavyweight I, I, division. I don't know. He's just a fun guy to watch. The guy is always fun. You know, tell me when that guy's in a fight that sucks. He just never is. He, he goes out and goes for broke and tries to win. He's intense. Even at the weigh-ins, he's intense, you know. Um, he's a fun guy. Where do you think his ranking lies, roughly? Do I think what? Where do you think he ranks, roughly, after tonight? I don't know. I don't know. He's fun. Last, <laughs> last one from me. Darren Till said uh, at the Q&A the other day that he wants Uriah Hall, and he thinks he could do that in the next few months. Does that interest you? Till? Yes. I just saw Till eating pizza backstage. Okay. <laughs> Tells back they're eating pizza right now. I said, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you eating pizza? Huh? Yeah, who's he fighting? Huh? Yeah, yeah. He's got a fight. Hey, Dana, right here, second row. Right here. Um, obviously, the success of tonight is probably going to light a lot of fires under a lot of fighters from other countries now kind of looking for the same thing. What's the criteria in terms of going anywhere else in the world outside of the UK for the UFC and is there anything in the works say in the next quarter well first of all we, we, we tried this and it worked out you know it worked when I told you guys earlier I'm not going to be that honest with you you know we, we, we had some problems I was considering pulling out of here two weeks ago I was going to refund everybody's tickets and go to Abu Dhabi so was that I, the, uh, the roof or was there anything in uh, just just you know there, there are certain things, you know, the world's a nutty place right now, man. It's not as easy to do to do business. And I said, I'm just not going to play games, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to places where I'm able to go and just run my business and do, do what I want to do. Um, but I can tell you this, we will definitely do France this year. We'll definitely do France. And uh, I will definitely come back here again. So... This worked out. This, 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 this was fun for us to come here and do this event. We, we had a little bit of a, it was a little wobbly a couple weeks ago, but we got it worked out. We got it fixed, and um, people kept their word, and, and, and uh, we were able to come over here and do what we do. So I'm very happy in every sense of the word with, with this event, and I'm going to come back as soon as possible. Glad to hear it. Just one more quick one. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk, and I think you confirmed it, Leon Edwards next. And uh, I know you said you want to do a pay-per-view here, but the timing we've been hearing is kind of July for the Usman fight. Is is that the idea? Would International Fight Week make sense? Usman in July. Does that make sense? Usman in July? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, Usman in July does make sense. Uh, we got to try to get that done when we get home. Would that be International Fight Week then? Yeah, probably. 
Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dana, um, I think you, were, you had Molly sat next to you during the paddy fight, did you? How yeah. was watching it alongside Molly? Yeah, awesome. which was quite loud. Yeah. Lene hit me up and said, Molly wants to come out there and watch Patty's fight, can she? And I said, yeah, have her come sit with me. So uh, she came out and she was pounding Howler head uh, out of the bottle <laughs> and going crazy waiting for him to fight. <laughs> She's awesome, man. She I is. love her. She is. And I'm sorry if you've answered this previously, but I was wondering with Nganu announcing that he might be out for about nine months or something like that with a knee injury, what's the possibility of an interim title being created for the heavyweight division? <clears throat> I mean, it's very possible. Do you, do you know how long his surgery is going to take to recover from? We find out this week. I think he said something like nine months. Yeah. If nine months is true, if it's going to take nine months for him to get cleared to start training again, I mean, that's almost a year before he would fight. So, yeah, we would do an interim title. And uh, I think if Aspinall's in the top five after this, him and Tui Vassa are the only guys that either haven't fought in Ghana or fought for a belt. They've kind of called each other out or whatever. Is there a possibility that that could have an interim title attached to it? Or do you think that's, that's not quite ready for them I yet? I don't know. I, I don't know if you throw the kid in a title fight with Francis after, you know, after just breaking in to the top five. But, you know, crazier things have happened. Thanks very much, man. Cheers. Yeah. Just down here to your right. Uh, were McCann and Tapiria's opponents taken to the hospital after their knockout losses? Um, yeah, we went to the hospital. Uh, Herbert, McKenna. Carolina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any update on them? Because, you know, br quite brutal knockouts. No, not yet. We, we don't. They went in there for... Uh, Cat scans, mm -hmm. they're not done yet. I wanted to ask, after McCann's win, somehow she found a UFC belt. Uh, do you know where that came from? Yeah, it was, it, it was a replica. There was a kid in the front row getting his belt signed, and I don't know how the hell she saw it, but she went and snatched it from him. Did he get it back? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, I would ask you just a different event. Um, Peter Yan is fighting in a few weeks, and I believe his corner team haven't got visas, and it almost looks like um, he's trying to get likes of Henry Cejudo and Sean O'Malley in his corner. Do you know about that? Sean O'Malley. That those guys were in his corner? Or, you know, his, his corner team have been denied visas. Do you know oh, that? Oh, oh, oh. I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea. Thank you. Uh, just a bit unrelated to tonight's event, but you mentioned Darren Till before. He's uh, struck quite the bromance with Kamzat Chimaev, and I know you're going for dinner with those guys tomorrow night in Vegas. I heard you say it this week. What have you made of, of that partnership between them and how good of a, of a move do you think it is for Darren Till? How good of a move is it for Darren Till to be partnering up with uh, Kamzat Chemaev and what do you make of that relationship between them? What do you think of the Darren Till, Kamzat Chemaev relationship? What do I think of it? Yeah. And how good of a move do you think it is for him in terms of his career partnering up with someone like Kamzat? I think it's great for anybody's career to train with Hamzat. Um, everybody that trains with Hamzat believes that he's like the best MMA fighter in the world, that he's going to win a world title. Everybody that trains with him says it. Um, Till said it to me when I saw him here. And uh, those are the kind of guys you want to work with. You want to work with guys that beat your ass every day in the gym. <clears throat> um, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm glad that they're BFFs now. It's it's, uh, it's what, quite what a I funny care? relationship, isn't it? It's, like a, a, it's quite a funny relationship. It's like a buddy cop movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's yeah, I'm happy. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. I'm happy for them. You're you know, glad to, these two got together. And you're going to dinner with them tomorrow night. Together. So you're third wheel in that buddy cop relationship. So I'm just asking... Obviously, you're fond of them both. You're going for dinner with them tomorrow night, so I'm just mm -hmm. asking as a boss. Well, I like them both them? very much, yeah. Well, there we go. Darren Till bought me my first ever NFT. So, yeah. I'm, I, he I, loves that stuff. I, yeah, it's awesome. An Ali NFT. Um, but, yeah, I, I like both guys a lot, and I'm happy they're hanging out together. <laughs> I'm glad you're happy for them. <laughs> I, I hope I gave you what you were looking for. Just the end. You're right. Um, after the fight, after Paul Craig's fight, he called out Anthony Smith. Is that a fight that you like? Paul Craig, he called out Anthony Smith. 
I don't know. No. I don't make fights tonight. Fair enough. And one other one. Do you see Paul Craig as a genuine title contender? Because it was mentioned before, he's on a good run now. So do you see him maybe challenging for the belt in the near future if he gets another win? Who? Paul Craig. Oh, Paul Craig. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, he, he had a great win tonight. We'll see what's next for him. And like I said, he's a fun, exciting guy to watch. I, I don't know yet. Thank you. Good. Dane, right, right down here yeah. with you. To your left. Um, you talked about the, uh, the, well, the the atmosphere and the noises that UK fans have made. And when we had a conversation earlier this week, you said you were looking forward to getting back to it. Where would you rank this crowd in the history of UFC UK fans? Rank what crowd this? Yeah, tonight's crowd. We've been here 10 times. Uh, I think, have we been to the O2 10 times? Or UK 10 times? Okay, so it's just, you know how hard it is to pick one of the, I mean, I, so many I don't remember, but, and, and again, tonight, like I said, reminded me how awesome it is to, to be over here in, in, in this type of crowd. So, but to rake it, I, I don't know. I mean, as far as the fights and the crowd and everything tonight, I mean, it doesn't go any better than tonight did. The only thing that makes tonight better is Usman and, and Edwards is, is fought for the title tonight, you know. Um, but other than that, it's just th tonight was the perfect night. So last quick one, um, since we're talking about anything here, how's the filming of Tough going right now with uh, Amanda and Juliana? And yeah, it's, it, it's been good. Yeah, it's over. We, 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 we already wrapped the season, but uh, yeah, it was a good season. Um, starts off a little weird, but turns out good. <laughs> yeah, it was a good season. Do you know when they might fight? Um, no, not off the top of my head. We First of all, we got to figure out uh, when it's going to air. We, we don't know when it's going to air yet. So when, when they give us the time of the airing, then we figure out when the coach will fight. And uh, you made a big fight recently between Michael Chandler and Tony Ferguson. Obviously, Tony Ferguson's had some rough losses of late. How important is this fight for his UFC future? Yeah, I mean, winning is always important here. Um, yeah, it would, it would, it's important. Thank you, Dan. All right, Good, buddy. Good night, you guys. Thank you.